I'm Kira Smith. I'm the author of The Falling in Love Montage, which is nominated for the KPMG Children's Books Ireland Award 2021. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the book and about rom-coms in general and what sort of makes a good rom-com, in my opinion. So this one is about Saoirse, who has just finished her leaving cert and she's looking to relax for the summer before she goes to England to university. Um, she's had a very hard year. Her girlfriend broke up with her. Her best friend and her are not speaking. Her mom is in a care home because she has early onset dementia and her dad has just announced that he's going to marry his girlfriend. So Saoirse goes to the sort of post-exam party looking to maybe kiss some girls, but definitely nothing serious. She doesn't believe in relationships. She feels like all of her relationships have kind of gone really badly lately and that she doesn't really believe that, that relationships or love works out. But then she meets Ruby, who they kind of hit it off at this party. They really fancy each other, but Sears is still like, oh, I don't know, this is kind of against my personal rules to, to get involved with someone. So Ruby sort of says, well, look, I'm just here for the summer. So we could just have a relationship that's based on the falling in love montage of rom-coms because Ruby is a massive rom-com fan. And that just means all the fun stuff, all the dates and holding hands and kissing and all of the nice things without any of the serious parts. And Saoirse kind of thinks, okay, well, maybe, maybe I could do this. We both know that it's gonna end in September because I'm going to university and Ruby's gonna go back to where she lives. So if we both know when exactly it will end, it can't really hurt. And early on in their meeting, they sort of hash out what the rules of a rom-com are. And, and Saoirse is very skeptical. She doesn't really like rom-coms. It's not really her thing. She kind of thinks they're all very formulaic and they go through the same tropes every time. And she doesn't really think much of this. So that's kind of what I want to talk about as well today is the tropes of a rom-com and, and, and kind of how they're structured. So as Saoirse says, there's kind of these few steps and the first part is the meet cute and the meet cute is this very adorable meeting for the two characters if you're writing a good rom-com that will really tell you something about who these characters are and what their relationship is going to be like um, even if they sort of aren't maybe aware of it themselves in the falling in love montage um, when Saoirse and Ruby meet, they kind of go on a bit of an adventure. And I think that it sort of shows that although Saoirse doesn't want to get involved with people, actually when she meets someone that she likes, it's really hard for her to resist kind of playing the hero and being the romantic lead that she, she doesn't think she is. So the next part of a rom-com is the falling in love montage, the bit that this book is is sort of all about. And that is all the kind of fun dates and laughs and jokes and kissing and fun parts um, where you don't really know the person, but it's all very exciting and everything is very upbeat and cheerful and you don't kind of get into anything serious yet. In the falling in love montage, Saoirse and Ruby make a plan that they are going to kind of do all of the things that you would see in a montage. And it's kind of set up in a controlled way that they have a list. They're going to check all of these things off, even if they seem kind of silly, but they have a really good time doing it. At the end of that montage in a romantic comedy, that's when you know our characters are sort of in love. So in a romantic comedy, after the falling in love montage, there's usually a, a big fight. And that is our conflict that we have to have in a story. Otherwise, there isn't really anything happening. <laughs> Just kind of everything going along nicely. Um, and while that is lovely, it's not very interesting. There's usually a big fight in a romantic comedy. And I am a really big um, believer that your big fight has to be based on something real and deep. Otherwise, the audience or the reader is going to look at it and go, I don't, just don't really understand why they're having this problem. Um, so one of the big tropes of rom-coms for the big fight is miscommunication, that people kind of have a problem that could be solved if they just talk to each other. 
But I think when you do miscommunication really well, there has to be a really good reason why you are not having that conversation. So that was part of how I wanted to take a romantic comedy, something that's generally seen as pretty light and fluffy, and add a bit of depth to it, um, which I think that really good rom-coms do. And there's a lot of examples in the back of the of a falling in love montage of different rom-coms. Um, some are great, some are just fun, and uh, some are truly <laughs> terrible, but I let you decide which is which. But Saoirse, kind of the thing that is driving her is um, her mum's early onset dementia. She, she, this has really affected her life and she thinks that this is something that is gonna happen to her as well. That makes her very closed off and very reluctant to get into relationships and very reluctant to talk to people um, in case they sort of pity her. I think that when you have something that's really deep and meaningful to the character and you can understand why they are having these relationship problems, uh, then it doesn't seem so silly anymore. And next up is the bit where the hero realizes they're wrong. So in a traditional rom-com, they have this big fight and then the hero will eventually sort of go away, reflect and realize, oh my God, I really messed up there. Um, I use a bit more colorful language in the book than messed up, but <laughs> we will leave it at that. Um, you know, some people will find that a bit frustrating. Saoirse finds it very frustrating when she's watching all of these rom-coms and she's like, well, you know, if people just didn't act badly, then they wouldn't have to have these big apologies later. But we all make mistakes in our relationships and we all have to learn from those mistakes. And I think that when you can really take something on board and learn a lesson and, and go back and reflect on that with someone um, that you've hurt, that's very useful. Before you can make up, you have reflected that you know, you're wrong about what's happened. Um, but before you can kind of get things back on track and make up, you have to, to do a grand gesture in a romantic comedy. And you kind of know these from different movies where, you know, it might be that the hero sort of sings outside your bedroom window or creates a huge scene um, to show you how much they care. And they'll have to do something very meaningful, of course, as well. It shows how much they know you and, and how much they care. Some people find this a bit cheesy. I personally love it. And <laughs> I think that in romantic comedies, and I think Saoirse sort of talks about this sometimes, is that sometimes the grand gesture can come off a bit creepy when you do it in public or you might embarrass the person or maybe you're not respecting their boundaries. So um, one of the things that Saoirse and Ruby talk about is how in a a lesbian rom-com, they don't have to do things the way that you would necessarily do them in a traditional rom-com. So after you've done your grand gesture, um, that is when you're supposed to live happily ever after. There are some great rom-coms that don't end with a happily ever after, but I think that you have to have a hopeful, upbeat ending. And I think that that is what makes something a rom-com that you kind of know that your main character is going to be okay. So that's the structure of a rom-com from start to finish and hopefully it gives you an idea of how we can use that structure but actually we can create something really new and interesting depending on what our characters are and, and what's meaningful for them and I would really love it if you wanted to write your own part of the rom-com maybe if you try writing a neat cute scene and you can send it in to us via social media or ask an adult to send it in via social media. And we look forward to, to reading them. Thank you.